This webinar will be recorded and later will be presented at SOS Electronic Web page in SOS Cinema. So once again, welcome everybody. Uh, two or three weeks ago, we started to, to add a new product, IQRF wireless communications modules. And we, we've got very big positive feedback from the market. So that, that was the reason why we started to, to think of having a webinar at this team. So that's why I would like to introduce Mr. Mastik and Mr. Hudoba, who will be presenting a new technology. Once again, I would like to, to tell to people who do not hear us that there is a big button you should click on uh, this voice conference. And if you have any further questions, please write through questions and answers, and I will try to solve any problem, any technical problem you have with our uh, conference system. So now I am passing the microphone to Mr. Hudoba, who will be presenting a new information about IQRS. Uh, hello, this is... Uh Simon Hudova uh, with MicroRisk. Welcome to our webinar about IQRF. Uh, I'm going to uh, share my screen um, right now. So just a second, please. There we go. So um, hopefully uh, you can hear me well, all of you. Um, so once again, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Simon Kudova. I'm a product line manager of IQRF uh, line or product line of this technology. Um, my colleague uh, Yaromir Mastik uh, here from support, where he's responsible for support, is sitting here with me. So <clears throat> basically, I'm going to do the uh, do the or provide you with the presentation, and uh, if you've got any questions, please note them down, uh, send them uh, via Webex, and we will be more than happy to answer it uh, at the end of my presentation. <clears throat> um, so let's start it. Uh, IQRF technology is a complex technology for the uh, wireless networks. Uh, we support uh, completely. Uh, mesh topology. Uh, what's important to say that uh, this technology is, was, or the development was started in 2004. Since that we've got about uh, third generation right now. Um, there was a big investment in this technology and definitely now we can see the feedback uh, uh, from the market that it's very uh, easy to work with, uh, very easy to uh, start with very short time to market, easy to uh, easy for you as a development uh, development guys to integrate it in in your product. Uh, we won also a couple of awards such as uh, Golden Ampere uh, in 2010, uh, and also this pr uh, project was funded by the <clears throat> by the uh, government projects, and we got uh, the award or the feedback as the uh, Actually, the, the best price we uh, we could get. Um, so, going more into the um, technical things. Um, so, first of all, it's a complete wireless platform. So, it's not only about a couple of modules or devices, but it's it's a complete platform. Uh, uh, it's based on the ISM bands 868 megahertz for Europe, uh, 916 for uh, for US. And 433 is actually worldwide, um, a little bit uh, longer, uh, longer wave, so uh, better penetration and so on. Um, so the base of the of the whole technology are the transceiver modules. We've got a built-in operating system. So in each module that you buy, you get an operating system that you use to write your own application. 
That means that uh, you don't start from scratch. You don't have to create the whole stack, but you are using the um, the commands or the functions of the operating system. So the the whole development is much faster. Um, your application uh, that you write, uh, you can write it in in C language, and you are uh, you are uh, using the functionality uh, or the functions of the operating system, and actually the functionality of the whole network is completely in your hands. Um, how you write the application, uh, the network will behave in this way. We've got a lot of examples how to do that, so you, again, don't start from the scratch, but you actually take the right uh, example for you <coughs> and start from there, modify it, and you are good to upload it uh, into the module. Um, another important thing we, uh, or the network, or the, the technology supports the full mesh networking, <coughs> uh, even with 65,000 devices. Uh, this is not only like a theoretical uh, number, but uh, we've got real applications with more than uh, four or 5,000 uh, nodes uh, in, in one network. Uh, 240 hops. This means that um, that each, <coughs> excuse me that each packet can actually hop 400 uh, 240 40 times from the coordinator to the to the very end. So actually, personally, you can see that you can decide if the if each of the nodes or module will be also the transceiver or the router um, or not. Um, regarding the RF range, definitely. It depends on the application. It depends on the environment where you use it. <clears throat> Theoretically, or the best we measured physically was about six uh, or seven hundred meters. Um, reality is about if it's outside, we recommend 100, 150 meters is uh, in the standard case <laughs> very okay. Uh, in the buildings, it's a couple of uh, let's say a couple of floors, or uh, usually if it's let's say uh, private home, you can cover the whole house just with uh, just with uh, just in direct range. But then you can use the the hopping as well. Um, external power that's uh, again one of the key features of this uh, of this technology. So you can use the uh, battery operated devices uh, when it's receiving all the time in a special uh, extra low power mode. It can uh, it can consume less than 25 microamps, uh, which is definitely on the on the top on the on the market. What you can get uh, for some modules, as TR54 in sleep, you are even under uh, 400 nanoamps. Um, even with the watchdog running, that means that you can put it on sleep and and uh, actually wake it up in, in precise time. It's still about one uh, one microamp, so very low. Uh, Consumption. Um, low data rate. Uh, this is not a uh, this is not a Wi-Fi. Uh, it's not uh, developed for uh, big data transfer. This is to control uh, the network. This is to collect data uh, with <coughs> low power uh, and uh, uh, low data rate. Um, each is the communication is actually based on the on the on the packets. Each of the packet can have uh, can take 64, 64 bytes, and this could be distributed via the hops uh, through the whole network or to the specific specific nodes or to the whole network uh, via broadcast. Um, definitely, there are no license fees. Uh, so actually, you just <coughs> buy the buy the modules, develop your application, and and uh, uh, there's nothing hidden behind this. Uh, uh, let's say money-wise. Uh, from the perspective of uh, let's say the, the portfolio of the product, so the, the base is the transceiver modules. Uh, we've got pretty uh, wide range of of this uh, of these modules. Uh, I will show you a couple of different uh, uh, ways or how to actually choose the choose the right one. Uh, but definitely you can uh, you can pick uh, the right one for your applications. Uh, there are also accessories like. Um, external antennas or um, cables and so on and so on. So again, it's not only about the, about the modules. Um, very important thing, uh, hardware development tools. Um, we are really focused on the whole development uh, since 2004 was focused on the, uh, the fast and easy development for you. 
that's why we've got a wide range of, of development of the Harvard development tools. Again, I will show you a couple of the examples. And one of the biggest benefits that we hear or that we heard from the market is our um, software development tools and especially the integrated development environment. This is something that for uh, what I heard uh, from, the, uh, from the customers was uh, this is one of the reasons why we go for IQRF because it's so easy to work with, especially with this uh, development environment. Um, another thing, uh, gateways. Um, the network is not some, let's say, solid system that you can't uh, connect to the to the <clears throat> to the other devices. Uh, but we've got gateways, uh, so you can connect um, this IQRF network through or to Ethernet to uh, uh, through GSM to internet or also uh, through USB directly to your uh, computer. So <clears throat> you can get to your network actually whenever you are and wh uh, wherever the, the network are or is located. Mm. For fast development demo examples, a lot, of, a lot of examples that are available for you even for free uh, on the web so you can just download it play with it, uh, modify it for your application, and uh, um, speed up your, uh, your development. Uh, one of the key things, uh, we are very focused on the, on the support. Uh, so first of all, uh, if you need any help, just get in touch with uh, SOS Electronic, which is our, uh, uh, one of the let's say, key distributors uh, that, we are, um, that we are working with. So get in touch with them, uh, ask for help. Uh, they will definitely do so. If they, <coughs> basically, they uh, apparently they can't know everything. So if they uh, don't have an answer, they will definitely get in touch uh, with us, and we will do our best to support your project. Um, direct referral addressing that's something which is coming very soon in a, in, a, in about uh, two or three months, and <coughs> this is this will be special. Um, plugin that will actually make the IQRF almost, let's say, a black box that wirelessly delivers uh, the data or the information wherever you want to. Um, this means that there will be no programming needed in order to get, uh, uh, to get your uh, network working. Uh, this will be also linked, <coughs> excuse me, this will be also linked to IQRF Alliance. Uh, I will tell you a little bit more. Uh, later on. Um, so typical applications uh, where we can where we see that uh, IQRF uh, network or IQRF technology is, is used. So first of all, building automation. You want to connect uh, your uh, thermostatic heads, your lights, your switchers, uh, your meters. So you want all of this in in one network um, and actually in in a cheap way. So you just uh, you just uh, create the network with the IQRF modules, and and you can control or collect the uh, the data very easily. Industrial automation that that's very similar. Um, telemetry, um, I would say, uh, currently one of the biggest applications we've got in Lightning, uh, for example, in Mexico, we've got the whole uh, shopping malls are uh, or the lights in the shopping malls are controlled through IQRF. This is the uh, installation that I was talking about, about 4,000 lamps in, in, uh, one, in one network. Street lighting, another, let's say, uh, typical application uh, where you don't need like fast reaction, but you actually can switch on, switch on the light, switch off, uh, change the illumination, uh, collect the data about uh, uh, about the temperature, about the running hours, and so on and so on. <clears throat> so again, instead of like putting the new cables uh, or the uh, new control uh, control cables in, into the into the ground, you can just put these small modules uh, into the lamps, and you can control everything. Um, actually, the the range of applications is really very wide. I just mentioned just the typical ones. Uh, but some, sometimes are the applications are even pretty bizarre. <clears throat> so uh, technically, how, how it works, or what kind of um, what kind of topologies uh, does the technology support? 
So first of all, that's point to point. So either you want to connect two things, st <clears throat> standard thing, you don't even have to like create a network for this. You just send a send out a, a packet and it's received by everyone who is around. <clears throat> then the other option is to set up a, a network. Usually you've got uh, one coordinator that actually controls the, the communication in the whole network. And then you can um, set up uh, in, the, in, the, in your application what kind of topology you want to use, such as point to multipoint, uh, extended start, start, tree, or mesh. Uh, we definitely, for most of the applications, use the mesh uh, topology because that's something which is uh, most robust. So uh, actually the probability that you will uh, receive the packet which was sent out uh, is delivered is, is the highest. Uh, so for most of the application, that's where, it, let's say, IQR is very strong. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we would recommend for most of the application this, this, this IQ mesh. Um, actually, how it all works. Uh, as I mentioned, you usually got one coordinator. Any module that you buy from, from us can be, can be the coordinator. It's just based on the, on the application. So if you want to create a network, you need to do the first, what we call, or well, first of all, you need to upload the, the application into the modules. By the way, you can do it also, also wirelessly, so you don't, have, you don't have to plug each module into the programmer and, and do it this way, but you, you can do it wirelessly as well. Um, so actually, uh, not only faster development, but also much faster, uh, much faster, uh, production of your of your of your products. Uh, so first step, what what you do is actually bonding. The bonding means that you uh, connect a specific node to the specific coordinator. So then the coordinator node, uh, then the coordinator knows. Actually, I have five, ten, or fifteen, or two hundred, or sixty-five thousand nodes in my network. And uh, so th this is the first step. Uh, so the coordinator knows who should be in the network. Um, this bonding must be done currently um, in the direct range uh, of the coordinator. So you need to bring actually the, uh, the knots close to the coordinator. And if I'm talking about close, I mean this 50, 100 meters. Uh, you need to run the function of bonding uh, simultaneously on knot and on the coordinator. You bond these two, there's some kind of communication behind this, um, and these uh, modules get bonded. Uh, based on that, actually, no one else can read the communication in the network, and uh, the, the module or the node will receive only the communication which is uh, addressed directly to him or which is addressed as a broadcast, that means to, to everybody. Uh, then, Usually, uh, what you do, you take your nodes and you place them on the on the specific places. So you put the street lamps on on the right place. You put the lamps in in your building. You put the, the switchers on the place. And <clears throat> the other step is what we call you run the discovery. Through the discovery, you set up the or out the there's automatic automatic procedure which set up the topology of the network. So it creates this, let's say, gray, gray area, uh, which is the uh, routing structure. So if you send the packet to, let's say, not 65,000, the information will hop fr from the coordinator to this two nodes, and there will be what we call as a directed flooding. It will like run or flood through the whole network till it gets to the not uh, 65,000. <clears throat> very standard question is can we move these nodes from uh, one place to the other? So usually this routing structure, this great part, needs to be static or needs to be static actually between two, uh, two uh, discoveries. So if you uh, move the node number two from here to here, it's definitely recommended to run a new discovery. The nodes that are not routing which are those ones. Um, and by the way, you can set it up um, directly in your application. This node is, let's say, uh, running on battery, so I don't want uh, 
this not to be a router, <coughs> so you switch it off and uh, you will not be routing and uh, this nodes can move around the net or within the network wherever they are they will always receive the information so <clears throat> another important thing is that you can also link more networks together so one module or each of these modules or nodes uh, can work as a coordinator for one network but at the same time can uh, can work as a, as a node in another network so for example, application that there will be one network on each floor of the building, and then you would have like a vertical uh, vertical uh, application or ver <coughs> excuse me vertical uh, network that will actually download the, the information from the whole floors. Um, so again, 65,000 devices in one network, uh, 240 hops, uh, various uh, routing algor uh, algorithms. So uh, this means uh, that, again, you can send the information, let's say, through the tree topology uh, or you can send it through the uh, mesh topology. It's completely, it's completely up, up to you. Also, you can select a uh, number of hops. That means that uh, if, you've got a, uh, uh, if you've got a network of, let's say, 10 nodes, uh, you will not wait 240 time slots. Uh, you will just uh, up, you, you will just uh, uh, make a, a optimization and uh, which is one of the functions of the operating system uh, and there will be no more than ten hops to optimize the time which uh, the, the information is actually flooding through the through the network um, scalable time slots uh, basically if the if the information is uh, hopping through the network, it's done that the coordinator sends the information, it gets to the nodes that are in direct range, and then based on the num on the routing numbers, as number one, two, three, and, and so forth, uh, there are specific time slots, and uh, the node with number one can route only in time slot number one. So this guy sends it out, and then it goes number two, sends it out, then number three, and so on. So actually, <coughs> the time, uh, how it takes, how much time it takes to get to, let's say, not number uh, 239 is the uh, time slot times number of hops. So this is the uh, complete time. The time slot, the min minimum time slot, we are running on ticks. One tick is 10 milliseconds. So the minimum time is 10 milliseconds. The maximum time uh, that you can get is uh, 15 milliseconds. And this is for the maximum uh, maximum uh, amount of data in the packet. That means 64 bytes. Um, discovery this is the process that, that, that I described. If you change the topo, uh, or change the location of the nodes, you should run the discovery again. Uh, user ad addressing that means that you know that which node has which number, and you can you can control specific devices and Another thing, working in two networks, uh, another uh, another option. Uh, so, if you buy a module, uh, what it can do? Uh, first of all, it can work uh, in the network, uh, or it can send and receive uh, network packets as well as a non-network packets. It can work as a coordinator and it can work as a node. And one of the very nice features is that it roots on the background. So that's something uh, that you need to like uh, put it in your application. But actually, uh, the there's automatic system. If the if the module receives uh, the information or the packet, and the packet is not directed to this specific node, and <clears throat> the packet is addressed to someone else, and this is a routing node, then it will, in specific time slot that is assigned to, to this specific node, will send it out. Uh, as mentioned, every module can work in, in two networks. Uh, these two networks, by the way, can work on the different channels, so there are no uh, collisions. And also, each of these modules can be programmed uh, via RF. It's very, <coughs> excuse me, again, every module can be changed into the into the RF programmer. Um, it's very easily done in our uh, integrated development environment. 
you just plug it in, uh, upload the uh, specific uh, plugin into the module, and then uh, this module becomes programming. So whatever you want to program, you send it in via uh, SPI into this uh, into this module, and it sends it out. And all the modules that are around in direct range and are in what we call as a uh, <coughs> RFPGM mode, that means RF programming mode, they will get uploaded uh, with this new application and start behaving on that. Um, one note to this, so far we've got only uh, what we call as a light version, so there's no feedback at this point of time. So um, it's like recommended especially for the development, uh, but as I, as I know also the customers use it with very uh, high probability uh, of uh, success uh, in uh, in uh, standard mass production. Uh, so this is how the standard uh, module looks like. So uh, two key elements, let's say RFIC, uh, also with a very precise uh, crystal, uh, and microcontrol with integrated operating system. Uh, there could be m much more things. It depends on the type of the um, of the module. Um, voltage regulator could be there, uh, temperature sen sensor directly on the board, um, external EEPROM, uh, there's also, by the way, internal EEPROM, um, and a uh, couple of, couple of uh, options how to uh, sort antenna. So from the antenna perspective, uh, you can choose, uh, actually the whole portfolio has this option. So you can have the integrated antenna on directly on the board. Uh, these antennas are really very fine-tuned and we've got excellent uh, range that we can achieve with this very small antenna. So if you've got application where you, where you need a small module, you can just put it in. Definitely, uh, this should be, let's say, in, in plastic package, not in the, in the metal package. If you've got a uh, metal box, uh, then you can uh, then you need to get the antenna out. So we get also this um, uh, micro uh, UFL connector. Uh, we also uh, sell the um, appropriate antennas. So you just connect it and um, get it out of the of the ballast that you need. Uh, another option is uh, just uh, uh, this small uh, soldering pad. Uh, so you can create an antenna uh, in the way or in the fashion uh, how you like it. So these three, uh, basically these three uh, antenna options. Uh, mountain options, one of the unique features uh, of IQRF is that um, you can plug our modules into the SIM connector. So working with, uh, with the, especially in the development phase uh, with the modules is, is very easy. You can just plug it in into SIM connector into the into the programmer, plug it out, put it in into your device, and so on and so on. And it, everything is it is very fast. Uh, second option for let's say I would say mass production um, is stand, uh, standard soldering. This is this uh, 54 line. Uh, now we've got also a very small or the smallest and cheapest module. 56, which is let's say uh, half of the SIM card. That's pretty much the the, the dimension of this module. Um, very popular in street lighting is um, module 55 uh, with vertical solder soldering. Um, that's because the best range of the antenna is uh, is horizontally or is in this range. Um, so if you put the vertically the module, the best range is uh, is horizontally. So that's why, especially in the street uh, street lighting application, they they uh, want to use this solution. Um, <coughs> a little bit about uh, uh, types of modules. So you can see that on uh, 52D, uh, you've got the RF part, you've got EEPROM, temperature sensor, LDO. Uh, MC with operating system, user application, and which is connected to SPI, UART, I2C, uh, and six IOS. You've got also two LEDs, so this is also 
pretty fun, especially for the development. So you see that that the module is um, is working, is doing something that you want or not. <clears throat> then for let's say usually for final applications, usually uh, you don't need uh, the LED. Uh, it depends. Sometimes you don't need the temperature sensor and so on. So 54 is let's say a uh, cheaper module uh, without. Uh, for example, LDO voltage. So if you've got the like a good power supply from your board, then you don't, don't need the LDO, and this reduces the price of the module and and actually also the uh, the di dimension. Uh, this is a little bit more de uh, detail uh, schematics. Um, <clears throat> so you see the difference between uh, 52D. Um, you've got ac actually uh, six pins. Uh, that you can use for different different things, IOS, uh, ADC, uh, uh, PWM, and and other uh, other peripherals. For example, if I compare it to 54, you will uh, you will see that uh, there, are, or if if you co compare it to 54, uh, there are much more pins. So it depends on your application what you want to use, which uh, which module you would pick. Uh, the whole concept of the uh, of the IQRF is a uh, two-layer system. So first of all, there's operating system. If you order a module from us, you will always get it with uh, uploaded operating system. And then it's up to you what kind of application you write uh, using um, instructions or functions of this operating system. So as I as I mentioned already, focus on the on the fast and easy development. So uh, you use only the function. You don't write the whole um, the whole uh, program or the whole application. Um, this means uh, the the development is much faster and time to market. It's uh, uh, it depends on the complexity. Uh, but to integrate or to to get it finalized for you, usually it could be a matter of weeks or a couple of months. Um, definitely not definitely not, not uh, half year or months or something like this. Um, Regarding memories, uh, so everything is uh, based on the uh, buffer memory. So we've got uh, typical four of them: um, RAM memory, uh, flash, uh, internal EEPROM, and external EEPROM. So everything is based on the, on the buffers. So if you receive some, something from the RF, it goes to the RF buffer. If you want to uh, save it, let's say to to EEPROM, you just Copy it to buffer info and then send it to the, the um, to the to the EEPROM. If you want to send it to the to your um, let's say uh, computer, you just copy it into the uh, buffer com and send it through the SPI to your IQR gateway. Uh, regarding the operating or in the, in the RAM uh, or sorry flash, you've got the operating system. <clears throat> then you then you've got Part for operating system plugins. So these are, let's say, specific applications that are uh, 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 that are uh, ready for you to be just downloaded, and, and you can upload them directly into the uh, into the module. So this is like a special functionality. Uh, uh, it's like a uh, compiled or ready hex or coded hex uh, with uh, .iqrf. Uh, uh, ending, and then you can have also uh, your application. Your application, the, the memory is there uh, about 1,500 uh, uh, commands uh, or instructions. Excuse me. And if you maybe this sounds not enough for you, but uh, usually because uh, thanks to the operating uh, system functions, you don't need uh, more than this. We have. A uh, couple of situations where the customer needed more, then actually there's uh, there's space in the operating system plugins memory in this part, and in the under uh, or after signature of a uh, special NBA, we can also uh, give you a license to use this this memory. It's I guess uh, another 1500 uh, instruction or 2000 2000 uh, instructions even. Um, the operating system also uh, is dealing with the, the whole networking. You don't need to deal with this in, in su such de detail uh, about timing. So there's a very precise crystal. 
uh, it control the LEDs. Um, very useful uh, de debugging for, for your development. Um, it's also uh, part of the uh, integrated development environment, so uh, the deb debugging phase is uh, uh, actually very well under control. So you do the debugging, th then you just uh, uh, actually get them out of your uh, of your application, upload it, and, and uh, the application is ready. Uh, it works as a as PI slave. Um, you can have also the uh, supply check, uh, so you can get the information like w what kind of supply uh, you get from your board, and also um, control of the temperature uh, if the temperature sen sensor is on the is on the board. So uh, this is a very reliable and easy to work with uh, uh, easy to work with uh, system. <clears throat> Just a very uh, simple example uh, how the code looks like. So uh, simple transmitter, uh, simply uh, one loop uh, showed here. If you uh, press the button, um, it pulls red uh, LED. Uh, you put into the uh, buffer RF some kind of byte or whatever uh, you want to send. Uh, you put the DLAN, uh, the data length uh, of one byte. Uh, pin is zero. This means that it's not it's non uh, network packet. If this would be uh, a packet for networking, that it would be one, and you would have to add some some uh, more information about the networking. But otherwise, the, now the pin is zero, so you send it actually to the whole world around, uh, and then you send the packet and you wait. Uh, 25, uh, 25 ticks, uh, and each tick is 10 milliseconds, so you wait uh, to uh, 250 milliseconds. So that's the easy code how you send out a specific byte. Um, to actually uh, receive this byte and, and send it to a specific pin, you set up the, the, the uh, pin C1 as an output, and while you receive it through, uh, through this function RFRX packet, uh, and you get this specific byte, you pulse uh, uh, LED or green LED, and for five milliseconds, uh, you put uh, C1 uh, as a one. And that's it. That's actually how you write the code. <clears throat> as I mentioned, uh, we've got a lot, of, a lot of examples. So basically, anything you want to do, the basics you've got in, in our examples, or you can combine these examples together. So how you start with? Uh, you get the startup package. Uh, you download it from the internet, or you get it uh, in our development set. Uh, you open the examples that you are interested in. Um, as a uh, I don't know temperature, uh, it could be uh, networking. It would be using relays. It could be using uh, um, PWM or whatever you pick. There's already example. <clears throat> you adapt or you modify it. Uh, this example into your application that you, that you need uh, very easily in in uh, integrated development environment. You compile it into the hex and upload it through the uh, through USB or uh, through the uh, through the wireless into the programmer and then directly into the uh, into your module. Uh, so again, very easy focus on development. Uh, so far, uh, what we've got the feedback that uh, once uh, anyone started working with IQRF, the feedback is always great. That, uh, it's a very a nice technology to work with, uh, and they usually don't want to switch to 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 anything else. Uh, so what what you can what you can download? Um, definitely, you can start with the startup package. You've got everything what you need there. So you've got integrated development environment, you've got all documentation uh, needed for the startup, you've got the manuals, and so on and so on. So it's definitely good to start with, with this. Um, text editor, you can use your favorite one, but there's also uh, 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 one edit into in the startup package or to be downloaded from, from our web page. <clears throat> sync, sync compiler, again, uh, for free. Uh, and the key thing, IQRF IDE, uh, which is also uh, free 
for you uh, to be downloaded on iqr.org. Uh, development sets, uh, it's something that, that, that we recommend uh, if you want, if you like hesitate about a couple of technologies, you want to compare them, uh, I would definitely recommend uh, go ahead and buy one of our uh, development sets. Uh, definitely you are in, in touch with the uh, SOS representatives, so get this from them. Um, try it and you will see if the IQR is the right technology for you. We are pretty convinced that once you touch, touch it, like uh, you will use it farther. Um, so, okay, excuse me. Uh, this is the integrated development environment. Uh, as you can see, you see the, the source files. Uh, so in, in C language, you can, you can op open and modify them. Then you just hit uh, one of one of these buttons or uh, F F10. You compile it with F5. You just uh, upload it into the um, into the module. Uh, you see all the all the commands. Uh, you can send. Uh, you can use this terminal. Uh, there are a lot of functions. We can definitely don't have the time to go into the detail here. Uh, it's very uh, powerful tool for uh, for your uh, effective development. Mm -hmm. uh, hardware development tools, uh, what you will definitely need is this uh, programmer. So this is something that you plug in into your computer and in IDE you will see uh, in, in brackets uh, the module that, that you plug in here uh, through the, uh, on, on the SIM card connector. So you can upload anything you want there uh, or you can modify this module into the RF programmer and send it out. Uh, to the other modules. Uh, DK uh, Eval 04, um, this is actually something which represents your uh, your device. So if you want to really start with the development on the very beginning, uh, <clears throat> you get this uh, you get this small uh, development device. You can plug uh, plug in the module that you program in here in uh, in the programmer. Uh, it's like uh, accumulate to run uh, device which could be charged uh, through the uh, micro USB cable. There are also a couple of buttons, uh, so uh, you can play with that. You can, you can um, easily start working, working with this tool. Um, if you want to do the test uh, with, the, let's say, uh, uh, with the buttons and uh, uh, LEDs uh, or relays, uh, you can also uh, uh, get this uh, development uh, kit as a DDCI01 uh, with uh, six uh, uh, with six buttons, uh, DDC relay with two two relays, and uh, this sensor uh, kit is with uh, two types of um, uh, thermometer, illumination sensor, and potentiometer. Uh, again, these tools you very easily plug into the into this eval or directly into the programmer, uh, you upload uh, the specific example that, that is available in our package, you put it in there, you connect it, and you're good to go to, uh, to let's say, test it or play with this. Uh, you can e even uh, create such a uh, DDC chain. Um, so everything, everything is ready to, to, have, uh, to make your development uh, fun and easy. Um, these are like typical two typical development sets. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This is the most popular one. Uh, you have uh, uh, three uh, uh, three modules in here. You have one programmer, uh, two uh, two evals, uh, one uh, one flash disk with everything what you need uh, to start with, and one cable. This is all you need to. Uh, uh, start with the IQR app and make your decision if this is right technology for you or not. Um, if you want to go, let's say, much more into the detail and play with with mesh, uh, with more nodes, you can go for this uh, development set mesh. They are not only about uh, 16, uh, 16 modules and and uh, these eval kits, uh, but there are also USB uh, gateways. And much more in there. So this is for let's say a real uh, test, 
uh, real development. <clears throat> uh, where you can find out more, uh, definitely, first, I, I guess, first uh, uh, target where you can go is uh, SOS Electronic. Um, they, they have uh, information about IQRF uh, there, if not right now, because we are still like starting up the, the cooperation with them. Uh, there will be the information will be there very soon. Um, I don't think more information about our, our uh, products are on iqrf.org. Uh, if you need, if you want to know more about the components that are on the board, uh, we are using uh, microchip. So microchip.com uh, would be the destination uh, for the uh, for the compiler. You can go to this uh, bknd.com uh, uh, page. So this is basically the, the, the first part of the uh, of the presentation. Uh, the second part will be about uh, what we call as a direct referral addressing. So what you can do uh, or what we did for you uh, in in order to simplify your development. I think now is a good time to uh, answer your question about this first part. So. Okay, uh, we have uh, one question, but uh, uh, for me it's not so clear, so maybe I would like to pass the microphone to Michal S. And he could more specify his question. Okay, Michal? Ah, uh, you don't have mic. So there is a question. Uh, that uh, uh, 25 uh, microamperes current in receiving mode is very good but strange value because other radio modules have current in RX mode about uh, from 15 microamperes uh, to 25 microamperes. So, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if you understand this question because, because me not. <laughs> Okay, I will try to answer this question. Okay. Uh, this is average power consumption. Uh, it means when you activate low power uh, uh, XLP mode, the module is in special mode when the whole module is periodically sleeping and checking the RF. And where is checked some RF signal, some RSSI level, he will stay and uh, uh, at receiving mode and try to receive the packet. So when this, when there is no signal, no noise, the module is only periodically switching between sh very short checking of RF and some period of sleeping. And average consumption of this mode is 25 microamps. So uh, this special uh, our consumption depends on the application. It is uh, intended for application where the frequency of uh, collecting data is slow, for example, one or two per day. Otherwise, the average consumption will be higher. So the XLP mode is uh, for some kind of application, but it is true. Is it enough? Uh, I think yes. So we don't have uh, further questions. So uh, if anybody has a question, please write it to Q&I part of, of our WebEx. And uh, Simon, you can, you can continue. Go ahead. We have we have an additional question. Okay. Uh, how old is the transmit range specified internal antenna? Excuse me, say it again, please. Uh, what is the transmit range specified with internal antenna? Uh, with integrated antenna, uh, usually it depends on the conditions and uh, what we uh, what we recommend uh, is to if you uh, let's say get our our modules, or especially this uh, DS start, um, there's already up uploaded application, which is actually pinging uh, the actually the signal from 
uh, one module to the other. And actually, you can leave one module on, on the one location and go with the other one. And you, sing, you see the LEDs flashing. If they are flashing red, you are still uh, you still have the, the connection. If you don't, actually, then, then you lose the connection. This is the best way what we uh, recommend to test the range in the specific environment. Because we can have the test uh, for all types of uh, uh, for all types of environments. What we can tell. We did our measurements in the in the perfect conditions. Uh, we achieved with this um, uh, with this uh, integrated antenna with this uh, 3.5 uh, milliwatts. Uh, we reached 700 meters. Usually, uh, uh, one building could be covered uh, in one in one hop. But this is something that we don't recommend because uh, we are, the technology supports 240 hops. So definitely, if you want to have the uh, if you want to have it uh, the network very robust, then you need more hops and more links. If one of them is lost, it will actually get to that specific node through the different uh, through the different way. Okay, thank you. Another question. Could you tell some words about the security of the network? Uh, so security, uh, first of all, uh, once you once you get uh, the knot uh, bonded uh, to the to the coordinator and you run the uh, the discovery, <coughs> no one else uh, out from the network can read the packets that are sent in the network. So you can't read them. There's no way uh, how to how to read them. Uh, that's the first thing. The other thing is that you can't send the information like out from out of the network into the network. So if there's a network uh, module or module which is bonded to one of the coordinators, you can't receive any packet which is just like from from out of the uh, from out of the network. Uh, the only thing what you can do, or theoretically, or what your let's say competition can do, uh, is to bring some kind of transmitter into the environment and actually uh, get the uh, get the specific band uh, or let's say channel uh, over overloaded, right? So there will be like too too much communication. So actually, your packet wouldn't get from one place to the other. Uh, like some some hints from the uh, from the reality, we were on on uh, a lot of exhibitions, uh, and we saw on our um, uh, on our uh, devices that actually all the channels were completely uh, completely uh, jammed, uh, and we still uh, our technology was still working. Definitely, the range was smaller, uh, but it was still uh, working pretty reliably. Uh, re regarding the, the security from the uh, from the uh, perspective of uh, 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 crypting, uh, this is something that we are working on. Uh, this will be part of the new uh, operating system uh, 4.xx, uh, which is planned to be launched uh, at the end of the year, maybe beginning of next year. Okay, thank you. There's no other questions. Okay, uh, great. So, uh, if you don't mind, I would continue with, uh, <coughs> and let's say, something which we are uh, preparing. Uh, we show this to um, some of our distributors, some of our customers, and there's absolutely excellent feedback on this uh, because this is uh, moving the IQRF technology Again, like step uh, step forward uh, to uh, to be like one of the most successful uh, network mesh network technologies uh, worldwide. Why we, why I'm saying that is because uh, with this DPA you will not need any programming or just minimal programming, and I will show you how it works. So <laughs> these are the goals of uh, of IQRS. Robust and, and reliable full mesh, short time to market, low development costs, full and, uh, and easy compatibility. So uh, we are 
So since the very beginning, focus on the very uh, low development cost, low time uh, or short time, short time to market. So this is why we developed also this uh, this DPA and hardware profiles. So <coughs> how it works current currently? This is what I was talking about, uh, like uh, before. So we've got the operating system. Um, and you write your own application and you upload the application. Usually the app application is like tens, maximum 100 uh, lines of code. Uh, but we want to even make your life easier. And we actually made uh, this standard application for you. Um, we call it hardware profile. And actually, you don't need to, to program this. So. Uh, Currently, with IQRF, you have to really get uh, or take our example for the, let's say, mesh networking. Um, read it through, understand it how it works, and if you want, if you need to uh, do any modification, go into the code and change the code. Right? Uh, with the with the hardware profiles, you will not have to. You will not have to do this. You will not have to had uh, such an understanding of, of how it works. And it will be some kind of uh, black box or the, the modem that actually, uh, on one end, you send uh, uh, a packet or you send the information, and it will actually get out from the, from the network uh, on the node that, that, you, that you specify. Um, so you don't have to deal with all, the, all this routing, uh, all this uh, mesh networking, and so on. So DPA is, is the protocol um, uh, that is actually open protocol. Uh, we will provide all of the, uh, all of the uh, documentation for this. Um, so the, the, the goal is actually you can do more or less everything with the network without any programming. So everything is ready for you. So how does it, uh, how does it work? It works basically on uh, Three uh, controlling uh, uh, words. Uh, the first is not address. So definitely, if you want to send a packet or send the information or read data from somewhere, you need to know from where actually. So you, you need to know the not address. That means the lamp number five or switch number two or whatever you pick is actually the number. Uh, of the not in the network that you know from the bonding. Um, the second thing, uh, each of this module or each of, of this not has specific peripherals as uh, UR, PWM, uh, LED, uh, the red one, the green one, and so on. You, you, you pick uh, whatever you want. So each of this peripheral has a specific number. So now we are in the in the specific node and in the specific peripheral that you want to use or that you want to uh, uh, read from. Uh, the command uh, each of the peripheral has specific uh, commands. So let's say for uh, for uh, RAM memory, uh, you can have write to to RAM or read from RAM. From uh, temperature sensor, you, you will have the command as read from the temperature sensor, uh, and so on and so on. In 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 this way. Uh, and then you can also send the data. Um, you can send only, uh, or uh, in brackets, only 58 uh, bytes, um, as, as it was communicated before. Uh, standard IQR has, has uh, 64 bytes. These six bytes are used for the uh, for this uh, for, for this protocol. So, in practice, how does it work? So, for not address, you have a coordinator as a zero. You would have not from uh, O1 to uh, EF. Um, by the way, currently um, uh, the DPA will support uh, 240 nodes, uh, but it's ready for uh, two bytes addressing. So in future, it will uh, support also six, uh, 65,000 nodes. Uh, for FF, uh, you would use if you want to send the information as a broadcast. Very um, close, just a couple of examples. Uh, for example, the coordinator has OO, not O1, E from O3, and so on and so on. Um, and for each of the peripheral, you've got uh, specific commands. So, for example, for uh, uh, bond new node, you've got a command O3 in the coordinator. If you want to 
let's say, get the temperature from thermometer, it would be the command uh, zero, 00. Uh, so to show you a couple of examples, if you want to bond in the, in the coordinator, if you want to bond knot number four, so there will be new knots with number four, uh, this this is what you will need to send into the uh, into the coordinator. So, coordinator as a as a not address. First phone number is also the coordinator, and uh, first phone command is bond new knot. Right? You want to uh, bond new knot number four, so you put into the data uh, 04. Um, this is the easy way how it works. Uh, so <coughs> we can actually give you much more, uh, excuse me, uh, much more of these examples. Uh, but so let's say to get a temperature from knot number five, you would say knot address is number five, first phone number is OF, get temperature is OO, you send it, and you get the, uh, you get the, the temperature back. So <coughs> this is the easy way how it works. Um, hardware profile. Uh, DPA is the protocol. Hardware profile is actually the translator or interpreter uh, of the protocol that shows up, let's say, in uh, in the specific knot. So it, the hardware profile defines uh, what kind of peripherals uh, you are going to use on the on this knot, and it will translate the DPA packet into the into the specific action. So uh, we will have our standard. Uh, standard har hardware profiles uh, ready for you, but if you want to modify, if you would need like a new one, this could be this could be done as well. So uh, working with the, with the DPA is integrated in our uh, integrated development environment. So as you can see, you can uh, uh, decide or tick if this would be a coordinator or not. And which kind of uh, first parts are going to be to be used? Uh, this is then get uploaded into the module, and the module is completely ready. You can plug it into your device, and for example, uh, the PWM. If you want to use this one, you can direct you, you can directly do so, or SPI, let's say. So you will not have to write or modify any code about, let's say, the uh, the networking itself. Um, the second uh, window or the second part that you can set up, you can directly set up the RF band. You can set up the channel. Uh, by the way, on 868 megahertz, we've got uh, 62 channels. So there's al always, almost always, I would say, uh, like enough space for it, for your application. So there's uh, there are no collisions. Uh, you can set up also the RF channel for the second network. Uh, you can set up the TX power and RX filter. So uh, all these things uh, are done in, in standard way of working. You need to write it down into your code of your application. Here, you just select what you want to use. You upload it into the into the module, and you are good to go. Um, so much uh, or less learning and much faster development for you. Uh, this is the window uh, from the uh, integrated development environment. So as you can see, you don't have only the terminal SPI test, but also the DPA test. So you can uh, here you can directly play with this. Uh, so you can set up the not address. Uh, you can set up the first phone number. Uh, even if you click with the right button, you will get the list of all the peripherals that are available. And if you if you decide, let's say, for a thermometer, and then you click here on the on the peripheral command, you will get again the list for that specific peripheral. What kind of commands are available for this uh, for this peripheral? You add your data, click send, and uh, you can test it for uh, for yourself. Uh, in our demo version, there will be also um, a ready macros. Uh, so you don't have to fill in manually, but you just hit the get temperature, and these three uh, boxes or uh, four boxes are filled there automatically, and just hit send, and um, you get or you get the action that you uh, that you set up. Um, these are examples of uh, packet inspector. Uh, 
the blue ones are what was sent out, the green ones are what, uh, what was received. So here you can uh, go into the detail and uh, read whatever is sent out or received. This is, for example, uh, to uh, get temperature. So you, you go to temperature of 25 degrees in, in this case. Um, there will <coughs> there's going to be a complete uh, and detailed manual, uh, so you will be you will be able to to, to read this. Uh, one of the like excellent function of this new ID uh, is this visualization of the of the network. So actually, you can get uh, directly uh, actually topology of the network that you just created through the through the discovery. Uh, just by the way, one small hint here. Um, this is not a, a routing topology. It doesn't mean that the information from coordinator to number one goes only through uh, this number two. No, this is only number two is only the parent or the, the knot that discovered this knot, this knot, and this knot. Um, if there are much more links between if they are in direct range, so if you actually take out number two, usually the information will get through number four to all of those as well. All right. So, so this is only so this is only uh, topology of the of the parent or, or the of the parents that discovered uh, their uh, children. It's not about the routing topology, but it gives you very nice hints like how it how it looks like. It can show you in bigger networks. It can show you, uh, let's say, uh, the bottlenecks that you've got, uh, because if you've got, let's say, only one link, then then something is is uh, wrong there. It can show you also the modules that are not uh, that were not discovered. Uh, so let's say you can have this 240 knots here routing and uh, another thousand uh, unbonded but not discovered. Um, Especially for the test, this is this is uh, this is very useful. So, <laughs> excuse me. So, what do you need to start? Um, you d need definitely the modules uh, or D modules. You will see in our portfolio that we've got also B modules as a beta. Uh, these modules are not recommended for a new development. So, definitely, if you are starting with IQRF, go for the D modules. Uh, so all of these D modules could be uploaded uh, uh, with DPA. You can use uh, the DPA also in the gateways, as Ethernet gateway, USB gateway, uh, our senders, and so on and so on. Uh, second thing, uh, you need operating system uh, 302 or higher. Um, if you want to do the visualization that I was just talking about, uh, you need the operating system 303. Uh, which you will get automatically once you order uh, your modules right now. So this is standard thing that you get. So if you're starting with the IQRF, you will have automatically uh, the good modules. You will get the good operating system. <coughs> Integrated development and environment. Uh, again, uh, free for, for download on our web page. Um, 4.12 or higher. If you are starting with that, this is something that you get uh, automatically. Um, and hardware plugin. Um, this is something which uh, hasn't been released yet. This is something uh, that we are sorry, but you will have to wait for this uh, a while. Um, the full version of the of this DPA and hardware profile or these plugins will be available uh, in on the beginning of September. Um, the full version will be available only for the IQRF uh, Alliance members only, uh, and the demo version, uh, which will be completely for free, um, this will this one will be limited only for six knots, um, so this will be for free and, and available for everyone. So the the goal is actually to show you you can play with this if you decide that the DPA or hardware profiles are the right uh, thing for you. You can enter the IQR Alliance and and uh, uh, get the benefits of the of the member of the alliance. Um, just what it means to you, uh, you don't only get the DPA and the full version of 
the hardware profiles. There are also uh, uh, very nice uh, uh, reference designs for some, some of the products. Um, and I guess that your first question would be, okay, so what does it mean to me? How much would I have to pay, right? Uh, so the answer is uh, we want you to, or first of all, we w want to have uh, good quality members in the network uh, or in the in the alliance. So we don't want their uh, every uh, guy from every garage uh, here in Central Europe or where wherever you are from. Uh, we don't have, want their every student. So we want some kind of limits or some kind of small barrier to be overcome to get into the alliance. So what we decided to do is that you will, to, to enter the alliance, you will need to uh, pay some like um, small money, something like 1,000 euro, which we believe is nothing for the, for the corporation, but it could be like a significant barrier for uh, just one guy who wants to misuse uh, the, uh, the technology. But if you pay this 1,000 euro, the important thing is that uh, if you enter uh, like in the next uh, uh, or on the let's say on the on the first period of of the alliance, you will get uh, products of IQRF for 1,000 euro. So at the end of the day, uh, your uh, membership will actually for free. So you pay the 1,000 euro. You get back the 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 modules, the the accessories, the devices, whatever you pick uh, for one thousand euro uh, back. So you will you will not pay anything. Um, so this is just a typical application um, that you can do in, in street lighting. You just upload or in lightning or actually in any kind of device. You just upload the uh, hardware profile. Uh, you uh, modify the hardware profile in the way you want. Uh, you will have some kind of coordinator, for example, in, in this Raspberry or whatever you pick. Uh, through the USB uh, gateway, you will get to the iCore uh, network and you control the network. Uh, you can uh, get, uh, get the data. You can switch on, switch off, uh, change the animation. Uh, anything you want, and you don't have to deal with the whole uh, with the whole application. You don't need to understand if I receive packet, then I put it in this and this buffer, and so on and so on. Uh, this is all done for you. This is, this is ready for you. Um, so we believe that uh, to create this kind of network uh, has never been never been easier, and this was our complete focus over this last nine years that we spend on the development. So um, this is all what we had for, uh, had for you as a beginning of, uh, let's say, working on IQRF. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be happy for your feedback and questions. OK, there is one question in our QR part, uh, more about your end. And products or end user products. Uh, there is a question: uh, When you will enter production thermostatic uh, radiator head SHDEH01, and what will be the price of the device? Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for the question. Uh, uh, we decided that actually this uh, uh, this. Uh, Product is uh, part of the whole project of uh, IQRF Alliance. So all of these products, as uh, uh, the center, uh, maybe the uh, uh, your customer knows about this. Uh, the center, the thermostatic head, uh, and these kind of devices will be launched together with the alliance. That means on the beginning of, of September, this will be uh, fully available uh, for them. Um, and regarding the price, uh, this hasn't been set up yet, so um, I don't know at this point of time. Okay, thank you. Uh, if there are any questions, so please please write in a Q&I part. Uh, I would like to tell uh, 
thank you to, to Mr. Kudova and Mr. Masti. Uh, it was a great presentation. Hope that uh, opinion of our attendees is the same. Uh, many thanks for attending this webinar. Uh, there is one thing so uh, many of you which has already attended our, one of our webinars. So we have prepared uh, a short survey. We would like to get a short feedback for this webinar from you and one of you will send uh, a fill the, the survey and, and will send it to us so we'll get a uh, development set start 03 for free. So I cannot see any questions so once again thank you for attending this webinar. Thank you to IQRF uh, team and if you have any questions, so you can contact uh, our company as well as Electronic. We have our product managers. They will try to answer your technical question. If not, so we can arrange meetings or conversation or whatever with uh, directly with the manufacturer, with Mr. Mastig or, or Hudoba. Uh, so once again, thank you and see you next time at our webinars. Yeah, thanks a lot from, from our side. We definitely appreciate this opportunity to uh, present our technology for you. So thanks a lot for um, SOS for uh, uh, organizing this event. We really appreciate it. And um, good luck in your development. We are looking forward. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.